Hello and welcome to this video on percentages of amounts. Now there's two ways we'll explore how to find the percentage of amount. We're going to use and combine simple percentages and we're also going to use decimal multipliers which we explored in another video. So let's take this example. Of £60 we want to find 10% of 60 pounds and then we want to find 40 percent five percent and 35 percent and we're going to use this first approach here of combining simple percentages now firstly what does it mean to find 10 percent of something if i wanted 10 percent of 60 pounds what does that mean well what percentage means as a reminder it just means out of 100 percent means out of 100 so 10% means for each 100 things you have, you want 10 of them. Well, as a fraction, that would be a tenth, wouldn't it? 10 is a tenth of 100. So 10% means the same as a tenth of something. Because So we could actually write this as a tenth of 60 pounds. And to find a tenth of something, you just divide it by 10. So 60 pounds divided by 10 would be 6. So 10% so of 60 pounds is the same as a tenth of 60 pounds, and that is six. What about the second one? We want to have 40% of 60 pounds. And again, this percentage tells us what proportion of 60 pounds we want. I.e. for each 100 pennies that we have, we want to keep 40 of those pennies, 40 out of each 100 of the pennies. So that we can see it's gonna be slightly less than half of 60 pounds if we're keeping 40 out of each 100 pennies. Now don't think that you can divide 60 by 40. I know that we divided 60 by 10 here, we wanted 10%, but that's because 10% happened to be a tenth. That doesn't mean that 40% is equal to a 40th, does it? So we wouldn't divide 60 by 40. But what we could do is we could say, well, if 10% is equal to six pounds, well, what would 40% be equal to? Well, 40% of something is four times bigger than 10%. 40 is four times bigger than 10. So therefore, we'd have four times as much. So it's just scaling. So six pounds times by four would be 24 pounds. And that's how much we have. Another way you could do this, by the way, is to convert 40% to a fraction. So we could also write, well, 40% is two fifths two-fifths of 60 pounds. And to find two-fifths of something, you just divide 60 by the denominator, 60 divided by five is 12, and then times by two is 24. So we get the same answer again. So you can either convert these to fractions and find that fraction amount, or you can start with a simple percentage like 10%, for example, and then scale it to get the percentage you want. So what about the next one? We wanna find 5% of 60. Now again, we usually start with 10%. So 10% we worked out was six pounds. So therefore 5%, well, we can see 5% is half of 10%. We're actually dividing by two this time. And therefore we would have half as much, which is three pounds. Half of six is equal to three. And what about the next one? We want 35% of 60. Now let's start with 10% again. We know that 10% is equal to six pounds. We can therefore work out what 30% is. So we're trying to gradually make up 35%. And 35% is 30% plus an extra 5%. So 30% is three times as much as that because that is three times as much as that. So we get 18 pounds. Well, we want 35%. We need an additional 5%, don't we? So 5%, we already worked out was three pounds. It's half of that one, half of six is three. And then you just think, well, which ones do you want to combine together? If we want 35%, well, we want to use this one, the 30%, and we want to use this one because those added together will give 35%. So therefore, if we add these two figures, 18 plus three, that is 21. Now let's use it for these examples here. We want to find 10% of 80. Now that one is simple to remember that a 10% just means a tenth of something and a tenth of 80 is 8. What about the second one? We want 30% of 80. Well 30% is 3 times as much as 10% it's of the, and it's of the same amount so we just times that by 3 we get 24. What about the next one? We want 5% of 140. 
Well, we know that 10% is a tenth of this. A tenth of 140 is just 10 times as small, which is 14. And therefore, 5% would be half of that, because 5% is half of 10%, and half of 14 is 7. What about D? We want 45% of 120. Well, we can first work out 10%. We start with that. So 10% of 120 is a tenth of it, which is 12. And then we need 40% now, don't we? I want to get up to the 40s. So that is four times as big as that. So what's four times as big as 12? Well, it's 48. 12 times four is 48. Now, we need to make up an extra 5%. We've got up to 40%. We need an extra 5%. So we want 5%. And 5% is half of that. We can divide this one by 2. So we divide the 12 by 2 to get 6. If 10% is 12, then 5% is half as much, which is 6. And now we decide which ones do we need to combine together to make 45%. Well, we need the 40% and we need the 5%. And that combined is 45%. And 48 plus 6 is 54. And finally, we want 37.5% of 400 pounds. So we first work out 10%. 10% of 400 is 40. It's a tenth as big. Therefore, we can work out 30%, which is three times as much, which is 120. Now, to get the 7.5%, there's two ways of doing that. We could either find out what 1% is and half a percent is, and we, with that 1%, we can times it by 7. Or we, we can observe that 7.5% is 5% plus 2.5%, and 2.5% is half of 5%. So we could do it that way. 5% is half of 10, but 40 is 20. And then we also want 2.5%, so that 5 plus 2.5 gives you the 7.5%. And 2.5 is half of 5, and half of 20 is 10. So now we've got everything we need to make 37.5%. We've got 30%, we've got 5%, and we've got 2.5%. And they add up to give 37.5%, which is the sum of those three, 120 plus 20 plus 10 is 150. Now in the video on decimal multipliers, we saw how we could turn the percentage into um, a decimal and then find percentages that way. And this particularly lends itself to calculator papers if we have a calculator on hand. So let's do these. We want to find 37% of 68, but using decimal multipliers we can convert that percentage to a decimal. What is 37% as a decimal? Well, 37% means 37 out of 100, and so therefore it's, we can write it as 0 0.37, because that's the hundredth digit, and we've got 37 hundredths. Now, the word of, we can turn into times. Just like if I had, say, um, a quarter of 80, I can turn that off into a time, so it's a quarter times 80. And a quarter times 80, we just divide 80 by 4, we get 20. So we can turn off into times. And then we got 68, and then we can just use a calculator. So 0.37 times 68, and that gives you 25.16. So we can get these percentages of amounts very quickly if we have a calculator if we use decimal multipliers. What about 78% of 60 pounds? Well, we just need to do that as a decimal, which is 0 0.78 of times and then 60. And that gives us 46.8, therefore 46 pounds 80. Make sure you put that zero on the end. And then with C, we want 135% of 460. Now, because that's a percentage above 100%, 100% of something is all of it, so 135% will be more than that amount. So again, we convert that to a decimal. Do you remember to convert to a decimal, we just divide it by 100. So 135 divided by 100, if we move the decimal point twice, because we divide by 100, once, twice, it's 1.35. 
of, we turn to times, and that is 460. Now it kind of makes sense that this is more than one, because if we time something by one, that keeps it the same, the value would be unchanged. So therefore, if we times by a value more than one, we must be increasing the amount. And indeed, because we're finding 135% of something, more than 100%, it is going to increase the amount. So it feels right. Just as if finding 78% of something, well, that's gonna be a bit less than all of it, isn't it? Because 100% would be all of it, 78% is a bit less of it. And we're timing by a number slightly less than one, and therefore it's going to slightly reduce the amount. So it just feels right. And let's do this, 1.35 times 460 is 621.